Hello everyone. Suppose that you set up your open web UI server for your entire organization. Now, if every single person in the organization is just using your account, well, it can be quite chaotic sometimes, right? Because you could have a million people all trying to chat at the same time. You could have a million chats just keep popping up. There's no privacy because everyone can see each other's chats and it can get quite messy. So in this video, I'm going to show you what role-based access control is in Open Web UI and how you can set it up. So let's go ahead and take a look. So here I am on my Open Web UI interface. And just like before, I have access to all of these different models, some that I have local, some that I'm accessing through an API like the GPT-5 Turbo model. If I go over to my admin panel, in my, in my dashboard, you can see that I am the admin, but I also have another user in my account, and that's John Doe. If you look over to what John Doe sees, well, they don't have access to the admin panel. They only have access to one model, and that's the Phi 3.5 model. So they're in my account, but I only have allowed access to one specific model. They don't see the chats that I am using, but I can see the chats that they are using. So what does that look like in my admin panel? Suppose John Doe is talking to the model and saying something like, help me study or write me a sentence. The model is going to give a response here. I can go back over to my admin panel. If I select chats, I can see what is the chat that John Doe has been having with the Phi 3.5 model. Now that's the admin user setting. Obviously John Doe can't see what I'm actually chatting with Open Web UI with. So admin has all of these different access rights versus user accounts that don't have access to all of these things. And that's going to be the main difference, right? Between the admin accounts and the user accounts. Now within the admin settings, if you go to user profiles, you can see that you can model whitelist. And in this case, I've whitelisted only the Phi 3.5 model, meaning that John Doe is only going to be able to use this specific model. If I also wanted to provide access to maybe something like the GPT-4 Turbo model, I can hit save, go back over to John Doe's profile, and does it show up immediately? Nope, I'd have to refresh this page. And there we go. The GPT-4 Turbo model is also available to John Doe now. So that is the fundamental idea behind user accounts. Suppose that you wanted to add an account. Well, there are two ways in which you can do this. You would click on that add user and you can either individually add users one at a time, or you can bulk import by storing all of the user accounts in a CSV file format. Suppose that I wanted to add another user. I would just enter their full name, Jane Doe. I would enter their email as well as their password. So I can set that password for them. Here I have John Doe's account. And if John Doe forgets their password, I can edit user and assign them a new password. If I don't want John Doe to have access to this open web UI interface anymore through my user settings, I can simply delete this user. And there we go. Now John Doe does not have access. Now something else that I could do is I can integrate user accounts with pipelines. So in the last video, we looked at how we can set up pipelines. And if I go over to my settings, select a pipeline, and the pipeline that I'm going to use is the conversation turn limit filter. And basically this limits someone's usage to one of the models. Suppose that I still want John to have access to GPT-4 Turbo, but I don't want them to interact with this model for more than five interactions. Well, target user roles as the user and the max turns as five. This way, I can whitelist the GPT-4 Turbo model for John, but I know that John's not going to be able to have more than five back-to-back -back conversations with this model. So that's how you can integrate the user settings with pipelines. If you haven't watched the video on pipelines, then I'm also going to share a link to that. Definitely take a look at that one. But that's pretty much it for this video. Hopefully it gave you an understanding about what user roles are and why they're important. If you found this video useful or insightful, then please leave a like. If you haven't subscribed to this channel already, then please do so. It really helps the channel out. Um, if you wanted to see future videos or ideas or suggestions, then please leave a comment and I'll make sure that those get addressed. That's it for this video. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.